Today I wanted to discuss this relatively recent discovery of a very peculiar nebula. Although in this case it's not the nebula that's strange, it's what happens inside of it. This nebula seems to pulsate every four years, changing in color and changing in brightness. And though unfortunately there are no videos of this yet, in some sense it potentially resembles something like this. And this is a really interesting phenomenon that we're going to be discussing in this video. It's known as the light echo. The very strange phenomena that happen all over the place that are usually caused by light interacting with certain gas, making it shine in the process. And though we've actually seen this happening all over the place many, many times, some of these light echoes are really extreme, and some are actually kind of mind-blowing. And some of them might even appear as they're defying the laws of physics. With the best example being this, V838 Monocerotis, that surprised the scientists back in 2003. And here, if you actually measure the distance, it appears as if this bubble is moving faster than the speed of light, up to about seven times faster, as a matter of fact. But this superluminous motion phenomenon is very well known, and so technically it's a kind of a visual illusion, and you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description that talks specifically about this example and a few other examples from the rest of the universe. Because today I really wanted to focus on the light echoes themselves, and really mostly because of this new example. But first, let's actually talk about how all this was discovered, because the survey that conducted this is also pretty interesting. It's known as Triple V Survey, or Vista Variables in the Via Lactea, that essentially collected data for approximately 10 years in total. And its purpose was really simple. It actually tried to look at the center of the galaxy, and specifically the Milky Way's bulge, in order to discover as much as we can about this region, but also to try to see through it by piercing through all of this gas. We actually refer to this as the zone of avoidance, and it's called that because it's very difficult to see behind it. All of this gas prevents any light from moving through, and so quite a lot of objects, including the famous Great Attractor behind this region, remain kind of mysterious because we can only observe them in certain frequencies. And one of these frequencies is infrared. Which is why very recently, the James Webb Space Telescope has also begun observations in this particular region. But during this 10-year survey, quite a lot of objects were discovered in the process. Actually, billions of objects. And some of them, at first, did not make any sense. And the first object, that nobody could explain, was discovered back in 2010. It was actually found pretty quickly because it suddenly changed in brightness, but did so in a very strange way. And so this object became known as Triple V WIT01, the first unusual object, with the acronym WIT just meaning what is that? And this was accidentally coined by the astronomers, and this kind of stuck because every other object discovered that made no sense now just basically had a different number. Now the first object we discovered has now been potentially resolved, and it just seems to be some kind of a classical nova, very likely hiding behind some kind of a cloud. The second object was some kind of an outburst that still has not been explained very well. Then there are a few other ones, but some of the more exciting ones were actually discovered just a few years ago. For example, 07 turned out to be another unusual dimming star, very similar to the Tabby star. But even though Tabby star only dimmed by about 20%, this star dimmed by about 80%. We've discussed this in one of the older videos, but in essence, this is still kind of unexplained, but assumed to be a result of either A, a lot of dust, or B, potentially rings and we're talking about really large rings that essentially cover a large part of the entire star system, very similar to the famous star known as Mamajex object. And so this was maybe one of the potential explanations here. Ironically, the next object, 08, turned out to be even more extreme. Here it dipped by about 97%, almost disappearing completely. And this is completely unexplained as of today. I think there's a video in the description that discusses this in a little bit more detail. But now we have this new object, number 12, once again discovered somewhat by accident when exploring this older data. Although here, the original observation was of the star in the center. It turned out to be a variable star that basically increases and decreases in brightness roughly every four years. But when the scientists analyzed the region around the star, they discovered that the region around the star was changing color with a relatively similar period, but did so differently depending on where you look. Interestingly, when the side closer to us got brighter, the side on the opposite side got dimmer. By why this was happening was not clear. But it was pretty clear what we're looking at. 
very likely an extremely young star in the process of forming that also seemed to be variable, changing in brightness every four years. And because many of these young stars will often contain a very large nebula around them, with most of the gas just being leftovers from the star formation, or sometimes even emitted by the star itself, here the preliminary conclusion is that it's just a young star with a somewhat unequal cloud around it, but also a star that produces very powerful emissions, like so many young stars usually do, illuminating the clouds and creating these light echoes. Or at least that's the preliminary explanation for now. It definitely makes sense, but we might discover something else in the future that might provide additional information. For example, one thing future studies might do is conduct a chemical analysis, or some kind of a spectroscopic analysis, in essence revealing exactly what's going on in these clouds. Right now though, it basically looks like some kind of an extremely red star with a period of 1525 days, which is to some extent what you see right here. Although honestly, I really can't wait to see this as some sort of a time lapse. I'm sure it's going to look really impressive, just like the star you see right here. And though this particular example is definitely pretty strange when it comes to light echoes, it is not the strangest by far. Technically, this phenomenon exists all over the place, but it's hard for humans to see it because it only manifests over astronomical distances. Here you would have to take a time lapse for at least several months in order to see what's going on. But it is actually a very useful phenomenon because it allows us to study the universe and specifically our own galaxy in a way that would be completely impossible otherwise. For example, we can actually discover various ancient supernova by studying these light echoes because they basically represent reflections, reflections of the light as it strikes various clouds. I think the best example here is the famous Tycho supernova, also known as SN1572, which represents one of the most studied supernova remnant ever. But by observing light echoes at a distance of just over 400 light years away from the supernova remnant, the scientists were able to confirm that not only was this a type 1a supernova, but were also able to discover a lot of other features, and of course confirm its age, by just observing the light from the supernova that traveled for 400 years, reflecting off a distant cloud. And so all of these reflections, with the light traveling for 400 years, suddenly became visible back in 2008. As far as I know, they're still visible today as well, but they will disappear with time. Another really intriguing discovery only happened a few years back. This was actually a detection of an unusual light echo extremely close to the center of the galaxy. It was coming from the central black hole and was essentially creating very powerful emissions at a distance of 350 light years in one of the nearby clouds. And by measuring these emissions and basically by looking at the echo in different frequencies, researchers realized that 350 years ago, the central black hole of the Milky Way galaxy very likely had a very massive emission at least 1 million times more powerful than anything seen today. And though it's not clear what caused this, it was pretty clear that it happened because there was no other way to explain these extremely powerful light echoes with the light suddenly reflected by super powerful radiation coming from the central black hole. And so basically here, as it travels away from the central black hole for many many years, it's going to create even more light echoes, very likely even allowing us to create some kind of a three-dimensional image explaining this phenomenon a little bit better. But there is something even more extreme when it comes to light echoes that was actually discovered completely by accident by an amateur or independent astronomer. Actually not even an astronomer as much as a school teacher, Hanny van Erkel from Netherlands. And you can read more about this in the blog in the description, but essentially she was a citizen scientist for the Galaxy Zoo, an extremely large project that's been going on for many many years now. And here, completely by accident, she discovered a very strange object. The object you see right here in green, and she called it Hanny's Voorwerp. Voorwerp is Dutch for object, uh, I think. Anyway, this seemed to be some kind of a rare astronomical object, appearing as a very bright blob, only visible in certain frequencies. Now here we see it as green, but this was dramatically enhanced. It's actually green because of ionized oxygen. But in terms of size, this was pretty big, 16,000 light years across and naturally created a bit of a mystery, but the mystery was solved pretty quickly. Mostly because a lot of other similar objects were discovered in a lot of different galaxies, now referred to as Voorwerps. And in every single case, they were somewhat similar in appearance and suggested something very similar going on here. That something was very likely illumination from the central black hole. And though in some cases this illumination was basically forming these enormous clouds, that original object 
very likely was created for a slightly different reason. Here, the scientists believe it all started with the Galactic Passage, where a smaller galaxy very likely fell apart, creating what's known as a tidal tail. There are quite a lot of them around the Milky Way as well, so these are actually pretty common. But then at some point in the past, temporarily became a quasar, or essentially became an active galactic nucleus, creating two powerful jets. One of these jets seemed to have illuminated this tail, forming the beautiful light echo, but also surprisingly, initiating star-forming regions, with many stars observed here actually being relatively young, only a few million years old. And here the explanation is that not only did the quasar produce the powerful jet, it also very likely emitted huge amounts of dust that formed these very powerful waves that traveled away from the black hole, interacting with the gas from the tidal tail, and then forming over densities, beginning star formation. And though it might sound a little bit complex in terms of an actual explanation, it really makes sense, and it makes sense for one simple reason. Something very, very similar was discovered right here in the Milky Way, with a former jet from the Milky Way's black hole illuminating the stream known as the Magellanic Stream. And you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And this by itself was a pretty big discovery, because here there's a lot of activity, including star formation as well. But it also highlights that these unusual objects, or these galactic light echoes, seem to be pretty common. And more importantly, it highlights how exceptionally useful they are for studying the history of various galaxies or the histories of supernova, star formation, and so on. And so light echoes are not just gorgeous, they're also exceptionally useful for modern astronomy. But we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries or some additional explanations. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.